across our country, more than three million female high school and college athletes compete, practice, and train every day to achieve athletic success. For many of these young women and girls, their sports are more than just a game. They're a lifelong passion that improves <clears throat> their physical health, boosts self-confidence, and teaches them the leadership skills to succeed on and off the field. In short, women's athletics have done incredible things for women, which is why it is so deeply disturbing to see the Biden-Harris administration wage a war on women's sports. In their crosshairs, Title IX, the landmark civil rights law that codified protections on the basis of sex. By requiring equal resources for training, recruitment, and scholarships for female athletic programs, Title IX led to an explosion of women's participation in sports. In fact, since 1972, the year Title IX became law, the number of female college athletes increased by a factor of seven, while the number of female high school athletes has increased by more than tenfold. Yet for years, we have seen this administration undermine the very Title IX protections that enabled greater women's participation in sports. In 2022, on the 50th anniversary of Title IX, the Department of Education announced new rules that force schools to allow biological males to play on female teams. And just in April, the administration redefined discrimination to allow biological men to use women-only locker rooms and bathrooms. Are Tennesseans and the American people really expected to believe this is okay? You do not need to be a biologist to understand that there are fundamental biological differences between men and women. And when it comes to sports, these differences undermine fair play, erase women's hard-earned achievements, and put female athletes in danger. Thankfully, many young women are bravely speaking out against the Biden-Harris administration's radical agenda, including Tennessee's Riley Gaines. In 2021, Riley was forced to compete against and share a locker room with a biological male during the NCAA Women's Swimming and Diving Championships. During the 200-meter competition, Riley tied for fifth with her male competitor, but when Riley went to the award ceremony to pick up her trophy, officials told her that they were giving the fifth place trophy to the biological male. Yours will be coming in the mail, they told her. This should never happen in the United States. Now more than ever, Congress should stand with the female athletes fighting for fair play and celebrate the incredible contributions women have made in the world of sports. That's why I'm calling for unanimous consent for my resolution to establish October 10th as American Girls in Sports Day. Of course, we picked that date for a special reason. As the 10th day of the 10th month, October 10th is represented by the Roman numerals XX the same numerals of the female sex chromosome. In the last 50 years, female athletes have gone from the sidelines to the center stage of competition. As we continue to fight for women's participation in sports, we must keep in mind what is at stake. And the American Girls in Sports Day resolution will help to ensure that we all join together and celebrate our female athletes. I ask unanimous consent that the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation be discharged from further consideration, and the Senate now proceed to Senate Resolution 669. Further, that the resolution be agreed to, the preamble be agreed to, and that the motions to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Objection. Senator from Connecticut. 
Mr. President, reserving the right to object. Um, first of all, let me uh, offer my thanks to the Senator from Tennessee for all the work that she has done with my colleague, Senator Blumenthal, to protect our kids online. Um, I'm truly grateful for what they have done together. Uh, and although she and I have not worked closely together on legislation, I hope that we'll be able to find partnerships to work together to further protections from our kids, uh, for our kids. And I, I mean that sincere, sincerely. She and I may not agree on a lot. As she will hear, we don't agree on this particular resolution, but I do hope that we get the chance to work together. Uh, I mean that, uh, but I also mean this, with all due respect. Um, let's be clear about what this is, Mr. President. This isn't an effort to solve a problem. This whole obsession with transgender kids from the right wing is just about picking on vulnerable kids so that adults can make themselves feel big. Bullying and harassing kids because it makes adults feel powerful. As far as I'm concerned, this whole effort is shameful. It's important to understand that resolutions like this do not stand in isolation. It is part of a massive campaign by the right to convince Americans that they should fear immigrants, that they should fear Muslims, that they should fear gay children, that they should fear transgender athletes. The world in which Republicans want us to live is a world where the biggest problems are not low wages or expensive health care or addiction or loneliness, but the threats posed to us by people who are of a different race or speak a different language or are of a different sexual orientation or gender identity. It's a massive coordinated attempt to marginalize people who aren't white, straight, and Christian. And it exists for a reason, to distract you. I have a ton of close Republican friends in this chamber who I work with a lot, but let's be honest. The Republican Party's platform today is maybe the most unpopular agenda of any major political party in recent memory. Ban abortion, cut taxes for corporations and millionaires, ban books, loosen gun laws. Nobody wants any of that. So what do you do if the things you actually want to do if you achieve power are super, super unpopular. You distract them with giant, gross lies, like immigrants are eating our pets, or greatly exaggerated untruths, like our high school sports are under assault from transgender kids. It is all an effort to hide the ball from the real agenda, abortion bans and millionaire tax cuts by trying to make you believe that you should spend your entire day, that you should spend your entire life just being afraid of people that are different from you. Let me give you the facts, not the fear-mongering, about high school transgender athletes. And I'll let you decide whether this situation is worthy of hundreds of bills having been introduced by Republicans all across the country, whether it's worthy of debate continuously over and over again on the Senate floor. There are over six million kids competing in high school sports today. For the problem of transgender girls competing in girls sports to be a national crisis, what percentage of that six million would be transgender girls? 10%? Is that a crisis? 5%? 1%? It's none of those. Let's take Florida as an example. More than 800,000 students in Florida participate in high school athletics. Before they enacted their ban, how many transgender athletes were in Florida of those 800,000 students? 100? Nope. 50? Nope. Over the course of eight years, in the entire state of Florida, before their ban, there were 13 transgender high school athletes. 13. Those 13 girls were apparently waging a war against girls' sports. That's a pretty small army 
to be waging a war. You're more likely to be killed by a falling object in this country than to have your daughter compete against a transgender girl in high school sports. But what if she did? I think every state and every school district should decide these questions for themselves. I don't think the federal government should get involved. But as a parent, personally, I celebrate those few transgender kids who often spend their entire adolescence being shamed or marginalized by the kind of small people who push resolutions like this. I celebrate the fact that they get the experience of the camaraderie and the happiness that comes with being part of a sports team. I think that's great. I don't think that's a threat to my kids. I don't think that's a threat to my community or the nation. I teach my kids to love everybody, to include everybody, to see people who are different from them, who are a different race, a different religion, even a different gender identity as potential friends, not as enemies, waging war against them to be shamed or bullied. This is an absurd resolution. It's designed to distract Americans from Republicans' real agendas. It's designed to build a culture of fear and mistrust, a culture that I, and I'm going to tell you, most Americans reject, and therefore I object. Objection is heard. Mr. President. Senator from Tennessee. Thank you, Mr. President. I would encourage my colleague to go read the Republican Party platform. It's very short, as a matter of fact. And there's nothing in it about banning anything. Believe you me, I, I know that. So I would encourage him to take the 15 or 20 minutes. It's not a long, lengthy document. It's got 20 actions that we are going to take, and then it has some principles on which we stand and believe. I also find it very interesting that he looks at a resolution that would celebrate women as something that should be feared, because it's not about fear. Uh, it's not about division. It's not about distraction. This is something that says to our young girls and these young athletes, we are proud of you. Keep it up. I mean, here's some of the language from the resolution. Um, athletic participation has an important positive impact on young girls, improving their physical health, self-confidence, their discipline. Women have been responsible for some of the greatest athletic feats in the sports history of the United States, from the Olympic Games, and we all cheered our young women who excelled and won those medals and those that were in competition in the Olympics, all the way to professional competition. Female athletes have served as an inspiration for generations of women and girls. In Tennessee, I will tell you, there are young girls probably out in the driveway bouncing a basketball right now. They want to be a lady vol. That is one of their goals in life. And as for the number of titles and things that have been lost since 2003, biological men have displaced women and girls from over 950 championship titles, medals, scholarships, and records that should have rightfully gone to these girls. And at least 28 women's sports titles in volleyball, swimming, mountain biking, track and field, weightlifting, and cycling. Now, this is a celebration of female accomplishment. This is a celebration of female accomplishment. So while I enjoy the opportunity to work with my colleague, I am disappointed to hear him feel and express his opinion that celebrating women and giving a day to celebrate our female athletes would be something that would strike fear and would cause division. We should all be united around celebrating our female athletes. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the floor.